Let's go! Let's go! I thought this was going to be a blowout! Freaking 8-0 eight, eight and O'Connell. Five touchdowns. You know, just casual five touchdowns. Done. Just casual, nice little five touchdowns there. But, Tennessee fans, I thought this was going to be a blowout, though. This Remember when you were... When the bowl games were announced and you guys were putting like the Purdue logo over a pile of trash and stuff like that and saying this was going to be a blowout by 40 and that the SEC is way better than the Big Ten and we're going to get blown out, that our schedule wasn't as hard as yours, that you're way better than us despite the record, that we were going to be missing David Bell and George Karloftis and we weren't good without them. I, I don't think this one was a blowout. No, I mean, what What time even is it? It's Let's see. It's almost 8 o'clock. This game lasted almost 5 hours. At the end of regulation, it had lasted 4 hours because the game started at 3 and overtime started at like 7.30. So that's like 4 hours right there. And then afterwards, it lasted a little bit. So it's almost a 5-hour football game right there. And yeah, yeah, you guys tried to pull away at the beginning. And then you sucked after the first quarter choked after the first quarter then the fourth quarter gets interesting it was it was we were pulling away in the third and then we let it get back when we probably shouldn't have and then in the fourth quarter brock thompson owns your whole your own your whole school should just pay for brock thompson's knee surgeries the guy is on two bad knees and is better than all your receivers on their good knees i don't know how marshall got this guy brock thompson is really good I feel like he's definitely going to, him and, and um, TJ Sheffield and some of the other receivers are definitely going to step into the, the role that David Bell leaves. I mean, Brock Thompson's, that dude's a beast. I've liked him since I found out about him at the beginning of the year. I like him even more after this game. He's, he's a great receiver and he is very good at beating up, I almost said the Tennessee Titans, but I mean... Yeah, the, the game, very neutral location there in Tennessee, against Tennessee. Very neutral location. Not at all favoring Tennessee in Tennessee at a stadium in Nashville, which is located in Tennessee. Purdue still had a good turnout, though. Traveled five hours down to get to Tennessee. I actually know a few people who were there. Um... Yeah, I, um, that, uh, to explain, I want to kind of explain why that touchdown wasn't called to the Tennessee fans who might be struggling with the concept a little bit. So you see, there's this rule called forward motion. Once your forward motion stops, you are no longer, you know, it's no longer live. The play is dead. And, you know, forward motion means you are not going forward for an extended period of time. And you see, he wasn't going forward for an ex he wasn't going forward for an extended period of time before he reached over. So therefore, the play is dead before he reaches over. Forward motion stopped before he reached over. He he wasn't going forward for like 3 or 4 seconds. That's forward motion had stopped at that point. I don't know how, I don't know why you guys think the rules are just going to change all of a sudden. But, and you also think that pass interference doesn't apply to you. And, and you know, booing injured players because you think that they're stalling. Very classy, guys. It was very classy to boo injured players. I mean, players definitely can't feel pain after the whistle blows. After the whistle blows, they're completely fine. They're like robots. Once, once the whistle blows, they can't go down. They can't have an injury. They can't, you know, get up and start walking and then feel an injury after they walk for a little bit. The only thing that makes sense is, you know, once you're injured, you just feel it immediately. Because, you know, there aren't things like meniscus tears where you don't feel those walking or sitting down. You only feel those whenever you put pressure on your knee. You know, stuff like that. Delayed, your body's delayed reaction because of shock to an injury, stuff like that. No, nah, no way that doesn't happen. They're just stalling. They're just stalling. So let's boo them. 
Let, let's boo 21-year-old kids that are injured. Classy, classy fan base. I mean, what can, can you expect? Most of them probably have Confederate flags at home. Oh, you live in Indiana. There's Confederate. There's not as many Confederate flags here as there are there. And the battle of racism, you guys win. And that's not a battle you don't want to win. That's not a battle you don't. Good grammar. That is not a battle you want to win. See, I'm getting infected by the Tennessee grammar. It's bad. Um, I'd like to thank the seniors who played for Purdue. Those guys gave it everything. They got their money's worth out of this game. Their last game gets to be a five-hour long game. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Some of them can decide to come back for their sixth year of eligibility. And I think most of them will that want to come back and play. Like Aiden O'Connell and stuff like that. Xander Horvath will be going to the NFL, sadly. Well, it's kind of like sad because I won't see him play for Purdue. But it's good because I'll get to see him playing in the NFL. So, and Jackson Anthrop, I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him a lot. He's He's been a very good player this year and last year. I'm going to miss him a lot. He's he's kind of a guy that, as a small white receiver myself, I've kind of looked up to him a little bit and studied his game. So, he's been kind of an inspiration to me. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss David Bell and George Karloftis. They didn't play on this one, but I'm going to miss them. Um, I'm going to miss all the seniors. It's going to be sad. It's going to be sad. I'm worried for what the future holds for Purdue. I mean, we saw in this game that we can still win without some of our best players. And we've got recruits coming in and transfers and stuff, but it's still not going to be the same. Which... Is sad, but with with a new batch of players, a new season comes, a new David Bell, a new George Karloftis. They're probably not going to be quite the same, but they're all going to be exciting. They're all going to be fun to watch, and hopefully they're going to help Purdue win games. First nine-win season since a really long time ago. I mean, this was the first eight-win season since I was born. So this season was historic. For multiple reasons, you know, beating all the top teams and, you know, being Iowa, being Michigan, top five teams. We got blown out by Ohio State. Everyone thought we were dead. We came back. We still won games. I remember at the start, I remember at the start of the season, I was thinking, like, I just want entertaining football. I, I don't expect any more than, like, four wins from this team. All I want is, like, four wins, Jeff Brom to not be stupid, and entertaining football. I got much more than four wins. I got double that. Jeff Brom sometimes made questionable decisions, but what coach doesn't? He was he was way way better than I thought he he was this year. He was way way better. And as for entertaining football, there was a lot of it. It was very nice. It was very fun. Um, this this is the season that I think most people expected IU to have. And the season IU just had is what I think people thought Purdue was going to uh, happen. But they, they switched. I mean, I, I wanted... One thing that I did get right is I wanted Aiden O'Connell starting over Jack Plummer uh, in week one. Um, I think I was right in my assumption that Aiden O'Connell is better. He's, for whatever reason, he becomes very inefficient when we get into the red zone and he throws interceptions and stuff but for the most part he's a really efficient quarterback sometimes forgets to throw to his check down in favor of the deep play but for the most part i'm gonna really enjoy him coming back next year it's gonna be fun it'll be interesting to see who steps up at running back next year and receiver i'm thinking brock thompson tj sheffield those are my two picks I forget if Milton Wright is coming back this year. He didn't play in the bowl game, but if he's coming back next year, Milton Wright is another one of my picks. I'm really looking forward to Brock Thompson. He'll he'll come back from his knee surgeries better than ever, and it'll be fun to see what he develops into because he's still got another year of eligibility, maybe even two years. But I'm, I'm excited for next year. It could be 
this year, it, or it could be like last year. It's really unpredictable for this team. But it's going to be really fun. It's sad that I might have to wait so long for next year, but... All, all seasons come to an end. So, see you guys next time. As always, I'm not funny, and there might be some Purdue football videos on recruits and transfers and stuff like that. But for the most part, this is it until next year. I'll see you guys then. We'll see what happens. It'll be interesting. See you guys next time. Just got unlucky with on a few plays tonight. You know, one of those one of those plays, I thought he was standing still, but he just hit the shit out of that one guy, and the guy went flying. They blew the whistle, and they called it on him.